Welcome to the Why Isn't It Working Business and Tech Podcast, talking all things business and tech in the emerging and enterprise space. Here are your hosts, Carl Wood and Michael Hamilton. Hi, and welcome to today's podcast. Today I have with me Robin Miles, who's from Inspire Me Consulting. Uh, he's a high performance coach and strategy consultant. How are you today, Robin? Yeah, doing really well. Thank you very much. Awesome, awesome. And as always, a have of me is Carl Wood. How are you today, Carl? Yeah, very well, Michael. Thank you very much for asking and yourself. Oh, pleasure, mate. It's lovely and cold here in Sydney <laughs> today. So I know we're all trying to rug up, but I know Robin's from Byron Bay. So, uh, and it's still I... cold up here as well. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> for us. Oh, for us. Winter has come all right, for us here. So, all right, we'll note that. But, um, Carl, I'll let you um, kick off with the first question, my friend. Awesome. Thanks, Michael. And again, thank you very much to Robin for joining us today. So Robin, you've had a very, very, I guess, you know, successful career around, you know, performance management and working with very high performing teams, um, starting at obviously Vantage prior to starting your own Inspire Me Consulting. Uh, you've also written a book, um, The Executive Edge as well, to sort of, you know, help, I guess, in, in many different ways in, in the professional world. So how did you get to this point, you know, in your career? Where did it sort of, you know, start for you? Yeah, it's a really interesting uh, question. In actual fact, once upon a time, I was uh, nominated for a, a Leader of the Year Award in Victoria. And um, uh, they asked me that question. I said, well, my journey start when I became the milk monitor in my primary school, <laughs> which was uh, in England. You know, yeah, uh, these crates of milk would be delivered to the school and there was these little bottles and all the kids would have, would have to drink one of these bottles. But by the time you got to school, it was warm and really rancid. So my job they gave me because they thought I'd be good at it was to inspire the people, the kids coming in to actually get them to drink the milk. So I had to come up with all these tools and tactics about why they should drink the milk and everything else like that. And it was really successful. And I continued doing that job through primary school. So it's a, it's a really interesting question because my journey really started from a very, very early age. You know, like I was the, the captain in football teams. I, I always saw that there was a, a different, more collaborative, better way of kind of doing things. And even like my primary school kind of saw that kind of within me. Um, and so I've had a really diverse career. So a lot of the stuff that I train and, and teach and coaching, yes, there's the theoretical components to it that I've learned uh, over the years, but I've, I've put it into practice. I do it, I live it. And I've also been kind of uh, uh, tested uh, in it. And kind of going way back, some of the early lessons were when I was 14, I set up an organization called Teo, which meant try anything once. Um, and we kind of run that, which is about people coming together to achieve anything that was possible. And I suppose now that's what I do in working with clients. It's like, OK, if you're stuck, if you've got a challenge, you know, how can I help you make that become a reality? But from a professional perspective, um, I really, first of all, went into doing aid work. And so I wanted to go when I was 16 and I couldn't for insurance reasons, but eight, when I was 17, 18 came, I went and did uh, aid work in Africa. Um, and then there I saw I could give more back to society by studying civil engineering. And so, you know, when I was in Africa having, you know, situations with uh, guns being pointed at me and all these kind of things, like, you know, when I train people in negotiation now, I've got the theory, but I've actually really been tested in this stuff. So I know that it really works. And I think that that really comes through in the, the work that I do. And then I studied civil engineering and civil engineering is all about solving problems, uh, breaking really complex things, breaking them down and delivering, you know, and again, that's those skills uh, that I use. But in infrastructure projects, the ones that I worked on were all about movement for innovation. How can we do it differently? How can we increase kind of collaboration and bring the different stakeholders together to align on a single objective and and really achieve breakthrough results and I worked on those uh, kind of projects uh, and it was from that that I got brought over to Australia to bring that kind of uh, approach as an executive again leading teams um, multi-billion dollar infrastructure projects and those types of things um, to then eventually go in into my own business. And there was a particular reason why I went into my own business at the time that I did, but um, we can get onto that if you're interested. 
No, very much. Like, so what is, um, actually, I wouldn't mind going into why you actually started the business and, you know, how did that um, evolve? That would be probably more I would like to dive into. And obviously living from Byron Bay too and operating from there. It'd be interesting. Yeah, yeah. So what, what ha- actually happened was that my, my career was really successful and, and, and I was always about coaching and strategy and development and doing these things. And in actual fact, uh, we had a young family, two children, and um, both of them had disabilities. And having two children under two with disabilities just was not a good situation at home. My wife was really uh, struggling um, with her health um, uh, as well, which was like, yeah, out of, you know, and one of the other things that I did as well, I trained in the Reserve Army in the UK for four years, training officers. So that really, sli- uh, you know, prepared me well for sleep deprivation of having children. But out of all that stuff, having, having this situation was the toughest in my life. And I remember uh, going to work every day as an executive kind of going, this isn't success. Like it, this work and job served me up till now, but I can't do this. And I literally just walked out of my executive career and went, I need to set up um, a business and income around the lifestyle and giving my children and my family what they need. And so I literally walked out of the job and and created Inspire Me and Inspire Me because I've always been very inspirational in everything that I've done, but obviously that was a very hard time for me personally. And to be honest, there wasn't much to be inspired about at that time. So setting the name Inspire Me was very intentional that it needed to inspire me. And the work that we do is about inspiring people Um, and enabling them to achieve what they want as well so that was kind of like a beacon and that was like I don't know about nine years ago now Um, and so that's the reason why I went into it and it enabled me to go well if I'm going to be away from my family I only want to be doing a hundred percent of what I want to be doing where I'm the highest kind of value and so then that led me down this path and then like you say the move to Byron was again to support the children um, but then again, we weren't, you know, totally resistant to moving to Byron <laughs> because the school was really um, the the school was the best one up here in the community and stuff for supporting my children. And, and hence we've 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 kind of, uh, yeah, operate from Byron and with COVID now. Um, yeah, doing everything virtually just just really, really suits. No, definitely. And look, a lot of people I've talked to over the many years, like I've, I'm from Melbourne um, originally, I live in Sydney now, but um, a lot of people have, when I was living in Victoria, I moved to Byron for work reasons and just for the mm. lifestyle choice. But for yours, it's more for the, for the supporting the family, obviously, and having the best facilities and support. But what, what I noticed is um, what you just mentioned with your background in history is that an experience, sorry, at, at that, is that yeah. you've got the life skills to actually do your job, to actually yeah. support what you're doing. I think it's not just the credit, you know, getting a certificate from university or civil engineering or whatever that is. You've also got the balance, which Mm. also qualifies you. And I think that also brings into the business, doesn't it? And the processes that you built to help people on their journeys. Yeah, yeah, totally. And the connection with Vantage Partners, who um, those guys are the spin-off out of the Harvard Negotiation Project and the people that I work with there, you know, they they kind of invented principle-based negotiation. These were the people who were the negotiators between Nelson Mandela and de Klerk for the new constitution for South Africa, did the Camp David Middle East and Peace. The, you know, they know their stuff. And when I um, came, you know, came home, I was like, oh, my God, you know, like, yes, I'm going to set up my own business to support the family. What can I do? Um, I reached out to them and uh, people said, how did you get connected to him? I said, well, his email was in the back of the book. So I just emailed him (laughs) and said, hey, I think we've got an opportunity to maybe collaborate. This is me and where I'm at because I'd learned all the theory, but applied it and done it. Do you know what I mean? And said that maybe there's an opportunity because I could help you do the training and the consulting. He said, absolutely. Let's chat. You know, nine years on, I'm still doing global training with Vantage Partners whilst, in uh, you know, like I, I work with Inspire Me, I still work with Vantage Partners, which I'm going to do today, training global executives in massive organisations like, you know, I don't know, Oracle, Citrix, Deloitte, um, uh, ExxonMobil and those kinds of organisations. So, yeah, it's been a, it's been an interesting journey. Fantastic. Look, and sometimes it is as simple as contacting the people you want to work with. Some people don't do it. They go, oh, no, they're too high. They're too you know, advanced for me. They won't listen to me. But it actually is that simple, isn't it? Yeah, it absolutely is. And, you know, one of the trainings that I do is on networking. And uh, and it's about thinking about networking in, in just a few different pillars. And there's four different yeah. pillars of about thinking about it. And when you break it down, it just makes sense. Like maintaining yeah. your network, like people who you generally want to stay in contact with, have a bit of a plan about 
making sure you reach out to them, you know. And there yeah. is another pillar, which is about advancing your network, which is a matter of just sitting back and thinking, who would I really just love to get to know? And, yeah. and it's kind of like buying a lottery ticket a little bit, like just give it a go. And, yeah. you know, some of my, you know, my mum kind of laughs about what I do a little bit. She's like, oh, you just have a natter with people. <laughs> <laughs> some of the stuff that she said it's true yeah, like, some of the stuff I got from her, like she said you know i just got bought up on this thing of if you don't ask you won't get yes and we're so fearful of rejection and so yeah. this is what you know one of the, the tools is like we fear so much but in actual fact we just need to kind of accept that i'm going to get rejected so when I yeah. go for advancing my network, so everyone listening to this wants to advance their network and fears rejection, just embrace it. It's going to happen. You're going to send emails yeah. and people are not going to respond. People might respond and go, who the hell are you to email me? Okay, cool. They're not the kind of person I want to know. Yeah. But like me, you know, like I've had a nine year, you know, career with, with Vantage Partners. It's going to be a really, really great one for us kind of uh, moving yeah. forward for both of us. So it's worth doing. No, definitely. Like, and you mentioned, do, do you spend like more of your pro, more of your time? You more specialised with executives or with middle management, or is there any? Like, where do you specialise in? Where do you sit with the right with the people in the workforce? You do yeah, it's really it interesting. The board? Yeah. yeah, it's really interesting because um, a lot of people absolutely niche. You know, they work yeah. with you know even CEOs who've got ten years experience or, or this. I work with a real range of people. Like say, I work with executives and, and senior managers, middle managers of global organizations, you know, like I train the international partners of Deloitte, for instance. Yeah. Um, I've got coaching clients who are CEOs, managing partners, um, managing directors. Right. And uh, then I've got people who are owners of their own business. But then I have people um, who... You know, they might be just consult. I hate using that word, just. You know, but they they just they, they're, they're consultants in in a consulting firm, or they're uh, team leaders in an yeah. organisation. But the key thing is that I think all the people that I work with, there's a similarity, and when they come together, they absolutely connect because yeah. none of that matters. Because you know, we've got I, I coach people, you know, from the ages of kind of thirty to uh, sixty-five. Yeah. And the person who's 30 is giving advice to the 65 and the 65 going, oh, that's brilliant. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. You know? But then vice versa. And they all have this common kind of focus on and a, an uncle. He was my, actually my granddad. I've got a picture of him here. My, um, uh, my uh, granddad's brother's son. I don't know what that relation is, but he lived a life. And when he was 82, he, I know he had prostate cancer and he had some other kind of really bad health conditions, or whatever. He was 82 and we knew he was out. And then he, he suddenly popped up on my LinkedIn profile. Right. And, and he went, oh, Robin, this is great. I've just learned about LinkedIn <laughs> and <laughs> wanting to connect to people. And he connected me to people who were in the family tree, who were executives and stuff right. to kind of keep that going. So he's just got that commitment to always developing, growing and kind of knowing. And that's the common trait that the people that I work with kind of have, if that's making sense. But they are across sector, okay. you know, from IT, government, uh, construction, right. um, healthcare. Yeah, the whole range of uh, whole range of um, uh, sectors. Well, that says a lot about the success of what you've got to um, by having that diversity and, and cross section of industries um, and so forth. And so when people do come to you, what process do you take them through? Or what, what is what is what's actually why do they come to you? Is it what's the common themes you find? Yeah, so uh, just remind me of that second question because it's a, an yeah. important one as well. So that the first one, the common, there's a few common themes. Um, so the first one is that for whatever reason, there is a lack of uh, meaning, joy and purpose. Right. It's like there's something kind of missing, you know what I mean? Feeling a bit flat and it's been there for a while. It's not, yeah. you know what I mean? And, you know, what what is that? And that, and it, and it can be, it can be very pronounced like, yeah, yeah, Robin, I've totally lost love with my job or my sector or my industry. And I help a lot of people transition between one sector and another. Yeah. That's why, you know, like I've had people as, as um, um, business development managers in the wine industry become nurses. Right. So for me to specialize in one sector is just kind of idiotic really, because they change, you know, like yeah. you've got to change. Um, so some absolutely want to get out of the job that they're in, the sector they're in or, or whatever. Others just like they don't know, but they've got this knowing that this isn't aligned anymore. Yeah. Um, 
And then the other kind of part of that is that things can just be like really out of balance as yep. well. Like it's like, man, I'm getting up every day and everything seems like hard work. I'm not enjoying it and I'm not getting the progress that I want at work. I'm taking it on, on the, the family, the children at home, you know, stuff like that. Because then if one area of your life kind of impacts, it starts to rot the others as well. Yeah, exactly. So we need to get back to that, that root cause. So that's one. And then the second is people kind of really, so that those people are feeling a bit stuck and wanting a bit of clarity. And then there's another group of people who've got the clarity, like, Robin, look, this is what I want to achieve. Can you help me get it? Because there's some, things holding me back from achieving it. And so they want help with their influence and their impact to kind okay. of achieve the goals that they want. So they're the two main, they're the two main categories. Okay. So you, you give clarity. So first, the first step, they come to you, talk, you, de- yes. you decipher the problem, break yeah. it down. And then obviously some, some problems are multiple problems within yes. one kind of things and you break it down and okay. So post, post that, what, what's the process you go through? to yeah, get them so, to resolve the problem yeah yeah problem? perfect so the question uh to everyone is um there's only one common factor in every problem that you've ever had in your life including where you're at now guess what it is and they think about it sometimes and some people don't 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 get it and some people need to be prompted i'm like don't look too far <laughs> it's <laughs> you you know you're the only common factor in every problem it's not that boss or that boss or that industry it, it's you you've got to start with you but then equally, every success that you've ever had is only due to you as well. Yeah. So in a business sense, if there was a common factor of, you know, issues coming up, you would start with that. So that's what I start with. So we, everyone that I work with, we do two different personality diagnostics to give them a greater understanding of themselves in the situation that they find themselves. Because people do personality diagnostics, go, oh, that's lovely, and then put it in the drawer. But I very much actively do it. And one's around who you are as a person. And the other one is about, there's a conflict mode assessment, which is about how are you showing up in the world right now in making decisions and collaborating with others. And then from looking at those two and analyzing the situation, the person, I'm able to identify hidden obstacles for them. Because sometimes what the person comes for is not what the problem is, like you say. It's actually like, well, wait a minute. It seems like your problem is actually dealing with overcoming fear. Or it is, well, when it, it seems to be your biggest obstacle is that you don't know what your purpose in your career actually is. You fell into it and you've gone along. You know you're unhappy with it, but you haven't got the clarity. And we need to actually focus on that first rather than just moving new sectors and hoping you find the right one. You know, like there's a whole range. It can be about self-confidence mastery, for instance. It can be that the person is just like triggered and frustrated with everything around them. Right. Let's remove that first of all. So then we can move into the next part, which is the strategic thinking and the strategic thinking. Again, it goes through a different process to most people where I go, right, what is the lifestyle that you want? And let's get clear of that. Where are you at with the areas of your life that's important? Where do you want to be? What do you want to do to bring it back into balance? Now we've stayed, stabilized things, got clarity. Now we do, do a deep dive into career or work. What does your career or work, what are your requirements before we go to the market? And then for that role, what are the skills, tools or tactics that you need to get the cut through that you, that you want? So it's, it's quite a logical kind of process, but it's not, right, you have to do this one before this one. It's like, once we do that deep dive with that person, we kind of identify, right, what's the, what's the route for them? And that's, so you saying the word guidelines, I use that word quite a lot. So you give yeah, a yeah. guideline step and, that's, and it gives boundaries. Is. <laughs> yeah it's the best way to do it isn't it yeah, <laughs> without yeah. confusing someone but yeah. it's funny so do you find that people have got insecurity so they come to really underlying things and in insecurity maybe is that what we're saying and they've got to unravel that insecurity is that, yeah. a, is that a way to sort of talk about it in a way or yeah totally you know they they want there's a common thing but everyone says it's slightly different you know like mm. someone um a ceo said to me he said look you know and he's a CEO of a, a management consultancy, mm. you know, so really knows his stuff. Yeah. He's like, but Robin, I know that every day you're just doing this. Yeah. So I've got my thinking on it, but I want you to be an outside witness to test and challenge me That's on great. it and give me any things that I might be missing because, like you know, there's one fundamental issue with blind spots. You can't see them. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got to get that external. So, 
for him, it's that. But it's also, we feel insecure if we're thinking something and it hasn't been validated. Yeah. And so we can validate that thought with our loved ones or our work colleagues, but there's risks in doing that. You know, you don't want to go to your boss and validate that you're not right for the job anymore. You know, yeah. that's kind of like a high risk strategy. It's better yeah. to do it with someone else, to, you know, because there's there's the consequences of that. So, yeah, it, there is that, it, you know, people are just uh, struggling to get uh, clarity, you know, clarity, confidence, then conviction. Yeah. That's where we go. And it's that that order that you need to do it. When people go, I want to be more conviction and, and I want to have the impact. Well, you've got to go back and get the foundation of clarity first to then get the confidence. Once you get that, you're off and running and you can uh, you can speak with conviction, you get the results that you want. Well, it's interesting. And it's good to point out the executives because it's a perception in the public that mm. those people don't have problems or they don't they don't have issues of insecurity. Yes, they do. Everybody goes through it, right? Oh, and I think it's a check and calling that out, right? Mm. And improving yourself. Look, I'm, I'm guilty, right? In the past where I've got, oh, I know enough. I don't need to learn anymore. Now, mm. that's a very bad place to be at, right? Especially with the changing world we're in. Yeah. COVID knocked us around a bit. But I think it's important that you always are learning every day. If you have that mindset, and then, then you can improve. Yeah. I, I reckon there's two key things on that. Um, the perception of executives. The, this is what I say. The higher that you go up, the lonelier it becomes. Yep. And I've been there you know, because you've got everyone looking at you now. Yeah. And that's the thing. And we talk about authentic leaders and, and everything else like that. And, you know, I absolutely was, but your trusted circle becomes kind of smaller yeah. and that people just might not see them. Yeah. And that's the thing. And, you know, with the mental health kind of um, situation that we have nowadays, yep. you know, the are you okay day, it needs to be no really are you okay, Dave? You yes, exactly. Okay? Because I know. <laughs> now that's become the surface. Um, yeah. And the, the other thing you said there about, you know, kind of feeling like, oh, no, I think I've got to where I need to with that. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, but do yeah. it consciously. Yeah. Because it's a matter of in optimizing our productivity, particularly nowadays where people are busier and the world yeah. is going faster, we need to select, right, what is it that I need right now versus what I don't need right now. So my health and fitness has met the KPI I need. Yeah. You know, which is my key personal indicator. Yeah. Because it's a matter of, yes, I could look like, you know, I don't know, uh, Chris Hemsworth, which my wife keeps reminding me of, who lives around the corner up here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, I could look like him. She's got a different key KPI than I have for myself. But it's it's good enough, you know what I mean? And because there's other priorities I have, but it's when people just get to a level of complacency across the board. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, uh, that's where I think that there's um, the you know they're missing an opportunity. Yeah, look, I've had conversations with many people um, around the world, um, you know, from over many years. But the common theme I'm finding is um, they might go into a new industry, maybe go and do a degree in mm. change industries, right? But they still feel frustrated. And I think you hit the nail on the head before. The, the individual yeah, yeah. is the frustrated with themselves. Frustrated about. Yeah. yeah, it's them. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with the occupation. It's the way they yeah. apply. And yeah, look, we're all guilty of it. Uh, I think yeah. a lot of people have been through it. And it's just silly if you don't acknowledge it. But, yeah. you know, is that something you see quite regularly? Oh, absolutely. And it's funny because in our little group, you know, I, I do one-on-ones and then we do group sessions where people come together and, you know, like a client, you, you know, who, who, who's been working with this for a while and she's really funny she'll turn up and I go oh my god because I say how are you really doing and she's like oh well there's these people and they're frustrating me and da, 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 da. and as she's talking everyone's kind of watching her and I'm watching her as well and then she slowly goes and I know it's because of me <laughs> like that <laughs> you know? and I'm like yes and I'm like do you need us to give you an advice no <laughs> you know because like one of the th- one of the key ones uh one of the t- typical ones that I think people realize is someone getting frustrated that no one does anything for me. Mm. And because I'm doing everything for everyone else and I'm just really frustrated and I've had enough now. And in actual fact, I, I see all of us as multiple people yeah. because, and you know, if you want to break it down, there's two, there's like big Robin that you're seeing now, which is, is big Robin looking after Robin's real Robin inner Robin's needs. Yeah. And her frustration or my frustration when I get frustrated externally is that I'm actually more frustrated if I actually stop more frustrated with myself that I've been neglecting myself 
not setting my boundaries, mm. giving it out to everyone else when I should have been giving it to myself. Yeah. But it's far easier to point the finger at someone else to actually accept that for my for myself. Yeah. And that's the lesson for us to for, for us to learn that I see, you know, even for myself. You yeah. Know, it's like, oh my God. Okay, Robin, what do you need to do for you? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Now, you know what? You hit a very good point. Um, again, that's a common theme in social conversations when people, you know, barbecue conversations about their work and having yeah. that very point, right? And doing that. And look, the, the question I really want to look, the good question I want to ask you is that you obviously you're not born in Australia. So, as mm. you mentioned earlier, yeah. um, with your journey. So, I talked to a lot of different diverse businesses over the last couple of years, particularly um, some in the VC industry, you know, mm. investing in startups, you know other areas too but the common theme i'm seeing in australia is a lot of people do bring up is a lack of collaboration of australians in mm-hmm. some cases and it's debatable to say that i'm not saying it's my opinion but it's what i'm hearing sometimes have you seen that is that true from your observations should australians be more collaborative or are they not Ooh, that's a that's a good one yeah. um, i once wrote an article in uh and I never got published, I never did anything with it. I was working for an organization that was espousing to be collaborative and everything, working on movement for innovation projects and in the highlight and everything else like that. But then one internal part of the business was in dispute with another part of the business right. in legal proceedings. <laughs> and I was like, and I wrote it, it was like, want collaboration, collaborate with self before others and that's what the article was because we we espouse it but we're not actually doing it internally um i totally believe there is a misunderstanding around the word collaboration yeah like that's what i fundamentally uh, believe like and uh and i and i and i think that we should be teaching like what are the different ways to resolve issues collaboration what that actually is, and when I do this TKI, people are like, no, I can't be low on collaboration. Mm. Um, but they might be high compromising. Yeah. So compromising, because people think that just because I'm talking to you, I'm collaborating. No, I'm not. I could be talking to you today, just asserting what I want. Yeah. You know, look, Michael, look, this is what I really want to get out of this and da-da-da, and you give me some options. I'm like, no, I don't like that. And I'm actually competing there because I'm mm. talking with you, but I'm just really pushing my needs. I'm not really interested in yours yeah you know, i can have a conversation with you where maybe the relationship between us is really important and you want stuff and i'm like yeah look i can do that for you easy and i accommodate so but i'm i'm not collaborating there i'm accommodating yeah. or compromising you know there's there's a hundred dollars to be discussed and we go look let's let's split it 50 50 that's mm. compromising but collaborating collaborating is different to those collaborating is me and you sitting down and actually understanding what are your interests wants needs and desires not your positions your interests needs wants and desires what are my interests needs wants and desires therefore let's jointly brainstorm ideas that neither of us have ever thought of about how we can really truly achieve a win-win outcome and make sure that that solution that we come up with is um, legitimate and fair and better than anything else and better than any other alternative we could do anywhere else. Yeah. That's collaboration. Collaboration takes a lot of time, energy and effort. And I think that we use the word collaboration where we just shouldn't. We should go, right, we're going to compete on this. Yeah, we're going to look for the best compromise solution because compromise is quick, it's fast, it's effective. Or yeah, the relationship's important. Let's go in, let's collaborate inverted Mm. commas with them but let's accommodate because we want to build up the relationship i think there needs to be a much better understanding of the five different modes of how we can how we can work with um work with other people to be honest and i i think that is a i you know to be honest i've just seen that as a global thing yeah okay and and we do assessments globally and what they've noticed is that between those five modes there's no st- statistical difference between China to the US to sure. Australia. It's just what it looks like. So collaboration in China looks different from Thailand to yeah. you no know, Australia, for instance. Yeah. So I think it's a global thing. It's just what it what it looks like. Yeah. yeah. And the human and that's the human side, right? And that's why, as you mentioned earlier, it's important to your personality tests, as you yeah. mentioned, to do to, to to identify that. It could be any cultural background, right? And oh yeah, totally. So it's a very important step in your process, obviously, in, in doing that. So yeah. obviously, leading on to that, um, what are, what's your biz- biggest success story? Like when you do, if somebody asks you that, when you want to sell something from your business, what, is, what do you go to to say, this is what I've done that's really hit the mark? 
Oh, that's really tough because I, I, I never kind of remember them. I always have to kind of wrap my brains. Well, multiple, use a couple of examples. That's yeah, yeah. one. But well, yeah. I'll, give, I'll, I'll give you one that's most recent that, you know, it's, it, you know, it's just so nice when, you know, the first time I had a conversation with this client, he, he had to lay down on the ground. And if he's listening to this, he'll know who he is because he talks about it. He couldn't even, he was so stressed he was so out of whack that we were doing a video call and he was like, I'm really sorry, Robin, this is really important to me, but I just need to lay down. I'm like, I'm fine, mate. If you want to lay down and continue the call, I'm happy to do it. So I did the call with him off camera, just laying down and we did the sales call and he was like, yeah, let's do this. I'll give you my credit card when I get up, you know, because um, he was just so stressed and he was, I think he's about 58 and um, uh and he was working where he felt like he just needed to become the next level manager and he, tr he tried oh. to do it in an acting role and it really didn't work and he really got burnt out and stressed and you know he was really at risk of you know having a heart attack and all this kind of stuff and then and then he didn't get the permanent role and then he didn't know what he was going to do with his life and everything else like mm. that and just totally out of whack you know fast forward i think it was um 3 months he came on a group call, so good, so grounded. He's like, I've got the best stress levels that I've ever had in my life. Right. You know, bang, like that. And I was like, that's amazing. He's now got clarity on his life. He feels and his wife feels that we've given his life back because he's realized that he was just going down the wrong path. And in actual mm. fact, what he needs to do is, you know, he's fundamentally made different decisions that make total logical sense. And he's so excited about life and he's going in a, a different direction. He's moving closer to his family. He's going to retire right. earlier than he kind of expected, but now he doesn't even have to retire because he can actually, he's negotiating with the stuff that we say to reduce his number of days. So still have that while kind of part-time retiring, doing everything that he wants. So he he's, he's the happiest he's ever been. And um, and that that okay. happens with clients but sometimes i even just have like a 45 minute free session with people there's right. a woman who i spoke with on monday and i spoke with her six weeks ago to give her some advice similar to what i gave this guy and she looked totally different she's like yeah i realized that up until now i'd just been mindlessly serving other people and stuck in something and i hadn't actually stopped and gone well wait a minute what do you really want now you know, mm. it's not a matter of just accumulating wealth because it's not, yeah. you know, the person who wins is the person who's got the most money in the bank when they die. It's mm. the person who's lived the life that they want. And she said, yeah, Robin, I don't need to have another chat with you because I'm going off for maybe six months and I'm going to go touring around Australia because I've got to pay out. This is the direction, a different direction I'm going to take my career in. And yeah. uh, this is everything I'm doing. I'm like, man, you're doing everything I would have suggested. And that came from a 45 minute call, you know, right. And there's a couple of other stories like that in the book. So okay. like, they're even clients or not, but just that is the power of just getting some outside eyes on your situation to kind of get you to realize what's in front of your eyes a little bit sometimes. Mm. Yeah. But then there's all the normal ones of getting people's promotions and yeah. getting people their ideal jobs and stuff like that. But it's those people that really stick in my mind that, that, that fills my joy cup. No, that's great, mate. I love it. No, that's good. Uh, that's excellent, given that balance. It's really a human conversation, the empathy side that you really focus on, right? A lot of people think it's work-related, but really, as you said, it starts at home. Oh, it's yeah. When you're good. Yeah. yeah, you know, like there's the, 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 the saying, you know, happy wife, happy life. I mean, yeah. it's like happy, happy husband, happy life, you know? And it's a matter of if, if you're good, you're good as a partner, you're good as a father or a, um, a, a mother, you're good in your business, you're good, you've built your personal resilience and that's what happens around you. Great. And so and, and you, you've got a lot of self-employed people coming through to you just as much as corporate um, kind of yeah, yeah, that yeah, totally. balance, right? yeah. Yeah. So uh, out, of our, out of our clients, you know, 50% of them kind of fund this themselves because they see that this is what they, they need yeah. to do. And then the other 50 is kind of corporate organisations um, mm -hmm. as well kind of funding. Them. But, but the, the similarity is it is that holistic approach that they're actually looking for. Okay. And, and so you just do sessions, one hour sessions, and that's how the payment structure works. And then just, you know, ongoing like that over a period yeah, of time. No, we, we right? actually, yeah, calling it coaching is a bit misleading in some ways because it's actually coaching, training, advising. Yeah, exactly. Because what I actually do is I coach them and we've got an online resource center of all the trainings in different subjects, such right. as self-confidence mastery, such as negotiation, influence, 
um, presence and impact, optimizing productivity, yeah. you know, a whole range of different subjects. We've got individual trainings on. So we train and they get access to that. They get the coaching one-on-ones, like you say. We do three group sessions per week um, as well. And in actual fact, I become a trusted advisor so they can call me at any time or email me with any issue that kind of comes up. Yeah. Because it's then, you know, like if they learn something new and they find themselves in a situation, like I've got one organization that are going through major change at the moment and they're having to have some difficult conversations with people they just need to chat it through at the end of the night so let's have a chat get you right so you can go out and be that light and be a better version of yourself uh, to impact others uh, in a more positive way i like that i like the spaced out you know it's small condensed a period of time and you can just do it layer into complexity with the conversations right with the coaching and the training and all that type yeah. of thing yeah it's that's where people come to the group sessions and they're like hey i mean uh, not for you but for everyone else what do you reckon i should do here <laughs> they want diverse views on things you know what i mean and that's good. that's you know that's uh yeah that's really good and we and one of the key things as well in working with people i don't lock people into any program no i just don't believe in it because I was saying this before COVID. There's one thing, unfortunately, Michael, you and I don't know, which is where either of us are going to be in a month. Yeah. You know, like we just don't know. Great. We, we can have our best intentions. So let's go on a month by month kind of journey so that yeah. you're only, you know, that return on investment. That is, is it a priority for you? Yeah. Still the balance there. Yeah. And I think that's the other thing that's um, that, that I love about what I do as well, to be honest. Okay. And also your remote working, that, and obviously the COVID, but you probably were doing that before COVID, more remote working on cameras, you know, using Zoom. So, but it's probably come to fruition more during COVID. Obviously, they're driving your business um, for the last 12 months, so eh? like, yeah, more Zoom calls. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. I mean, when, when I first started this, I literally had the offer was like, try it. If you don't like it, you don't have to pay. Cool. I, I, you know, that was, what, five years ago. And uh, because... People didn't want to use Zoom or Skype. You know? No, they don't. They, they did not want to use it. And then when I and then my clients who yeah they loved it, then I was still flying down to Melbourne and Sydney yeah. place. And I'm like, right, and in Melbourne we can do it in person. And they went, uh, can we just use Zoom? It's much yeah. easier. <laughs> in a like, hotel room. You're in the hotel room. Yeah, I was just in a hotel room <laughs> on the other side of the CBD. You know what I mean? And so, but now with COVID, that's what's brilliant because. Yeah. Um, I don't have to fly to Singapore and across Asia and China and stuff to do my in-person training. That's yeah. really virtually now as well. So it's, yeah, it's been really good for us. No, it's interesting. And look, um, Carl, obviously I mentioned earlier, Carl's a computer dropped out. So when we went earlier, so it's like everybody's watching that happened and Carl's missing. He's not gone, yeah. not, not talking, he's just gone offline for the ones on the podcast listening. He was so offended um, by me. <laughs> he wasn't offended. He goes, I was a bit worried about him. He was, about, he, was, he, was, he was blurring out and then he went on hold, but I found out his computer crashed so, uh, yeah, as it happens. And God, God bless remote working. And, and yeah, just, yeah, got to love an IT system. <laughs> But the um, reason why I was just going to ask the next question is that Carl and I have a heavy IT background, okay, yeah. um, from the years of delivery there. Moving to product business now and product delivery, which is pretty good, pre-sales. Yeah. Selling, um, which, we, which we totally enjoy. We love it, mm. right? Um, you get to meet diverse people. But have, with the IT people that come to you for your, for your business and, and support, what do you find are the common themes from an IT perspective, you see? Yeah, it's, it's interesting because there's... There's a massive pressure on the IT world Mm. as such. There's a massive pressure, but there's massive opportunity there. And I'm kind of seeing a bit of a, um, um, bit of a, a bit of a split. And this is where some people are transitioning between organizations, for instance, that there is the traditional kind of right. There's, there's challenge and opportunity and some organizations are really just putting that as pressure, as force. And this is what's interesting from a leadership perspective because you can get different outcomes because there's a point of force and pressure which gets results. And then there's a point of force and pressure which just burns people out. And and I've kind of seen where there's organisations that have in the IT space that have... Um, you know, they've, they, they're just been more driven by the, the stats and the numbers and the opportunity. And this is what we need to be enforcing and kind of, yeah, it's not that great a kind of environment for people. And then there's the others where people are really seeing the opportunity and the challenges and they're almost bringing that. And I think the difference, to be honest, between the two is they're bringing in the human dynamic. And this is the thing in the IT kind of space that I see is they're 
they're seeing that their success will only be achieved through people, through their own people, through their real connections with other people, knowing what are your challenges and your issues. And instead of selling, solving, you know, and actually really kind of creating. And so it's that human dynamic, I think. So, so I'm seeing the, these two kind of ways kind of play out. And even organizationally, I'm seeing kind of post COVID with returning to work, for instance, that some organizations are, no, you must come back five days because that's what it is. And there's others who are totally flexible. And I just feel like people are going to vote with their feet, to be honest, because um, I think people are over kind of that way. And the human dynamic is the, the way that people, uh, people want to want to be. And then also from an IT perspective as well, just the, the end user, because there's lots of technical solutions that we can give people so that they're more productive and this, that and the other, but then they're too productive in the way that they can't get away from IT, away from work and it's impacting their personal lives. And so I very much see that we need to be embracing that human dynamic much more and realizing that at the end of the day, we're all people. Um, yeah, that's that's probably my, my, my big, yeah, my big kind of thing, to be honest. And with the coaching clients who are in the IT world, actually looking for jobs and work that's kind of all organizations that are more in alignment making that shift yeah, is kind yeah. of what they're what they're really wanting because the people i work with want to do that more connected kind mm. of side of things and that's what i see is really needed to be honest it's funny you say that um carl and i over the years have talked about it but we found that sometimes a lot of it people don't want to talk to the business and it's obviously mm. without commerce engagement and business it doesn't pay the bills for it i think that yeah. gets lost in translation a lot um what i've noticed about why the why they're there. But mm. um, yeah, I think what's happening now is going talking more, collaborating more in the yes. IT industry instead of just sitting down and doing your job in isolation, um, obviously talking and being collaborative online. And obviously COVID would have brought that forward a lot more for many industries, not just IT, but having to work online, do Zoom calls at home, you yeah. know, a lot more and change that behaviour. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I think that um, I was talking to a client and um well, he's in he's in the IT world. He's a, a transformation um, um, vice president, I think is his title, um, but does the, the the IT kind of project side of things as well as part of the transformation. And 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 he he's great because he every now and he just stops and goes, you know what, Robin, this is my advice on what I'm seeing. And he gives me these little nuggets. And his little <laughs> nugget was that yeah, what he's really seen is this reluctance of people to adapt. Yeah, like he said, I just don't see him adapting. Like get over it. Like you need to, you know, for instance, he was talking about quarantine. You need to quarantine. So what? Just do it. Like, <laughs> and then make it work for you. It's yeah. part of how we, we are at the moment. It might not be in the future, but it is now. Adapt, work with it. So what do we need to do kind of next rather than, mm. um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's, uh, I think that's a really big. And that, again, these key things go across all sectors. It's just a matter of what does that adaption look like right. in the IT world as opposed to, you know, a construction or, or healthcare. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like we all need to, and that's where I work is the common theme across. Yeah. And the person brings their subject matter about what that means in that sector. Yeah. No, totally. And look, and sometimes we talk about IT, as I was saying, Carl and I talk about IT by itself. It's the same problems in other industries. It's, oh, course, totally. It seems to be this perception is unique to certain industries, not, you know, and um, I think you have seen that. I think you've got the experience to show that and um, and bring that across and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. It's good. Yeah. Um, what does the future look like for you, mate? What's the what's the roadmap? Yeah, I um, I mean, I love, similar to yourself, I love what I do. Um and um, really, it's a matter of, um, you know, living with purpose, leading with purpose and serving with purpose. So we're uh, continuing to look at ways in which we can serve a broader audience. Like, you know, 12 months ago, we really put a lot of stuff out on YouTube, free content yeah. and developing free programs and stuff because it's easy to kind of do it and then just have it there for people to kind of sign up to and, and those kinds of things. So we've got loads of free content, you know, like I give my book away for free, yeah. free little mini series um, we give away. We're developing another little program to give away for free as well. Um, and so it's, it's doing that kind of stuff, but then also identifying, like you say, what are the trends and the needs? Mm. Um, so we are developing at the moment a program that we're going to be launching in August, which is, um, uh, it's going to be called the influential engineer 
So it's okay. anyone for in engineering from IT to any kind of technical. And it's called the influential engineer because um, engineers, like the 1840s definition of civil engineering is harnessing the forces of nature for the benefit of mankind. Right. Now, I think those people who kind of go into engineering, who are servicing society, should have the right voice to be able to get the outcomes they want. So I'm developing that kind of program, particularly for engineers. And so we'll continue to expand and offer different kind of programs depending on what the needs yeah. that I kind of see are, are out there. But um, yeah, with COVID and living in Byron, you know, any lockdowns, we ain't going anywhere, to be honest. So uh, <laughs> that's that's uh, that's our approach for the next, uh, definitely the next eight years, you know. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, Sending well, value out. Always add value. And that's it's similar to yeah. what I've done at the moment. Obviously, the podcast is sending out value and talking to people, We're just getting totally things, right. And, and getting that out there, you know, and, and collaborating from that point of view. But so, w- where can we find your book? Is it on your website and online? Is it on ebooks too? Or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can buy it on Amazon. You can the, the print and hard copies in 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 Australia now of it as well. Right. But um, you can just get a free version. Um, so if you just go to www.inspiremeconsulting.com.au. Um, and then there's a pop-up there or it's on the first page, I think, and you can, um, you can uh, both uh, download the book and then, um, then there's another link where you can get the free Kickstarter program, cool. which is like five videos over five days to go through some of those steps. And if that's all you need, great, you're off and running. Um, so that's the best place. Connect via LinkedIn, just Robin Miles, cool. um, the bald ugly one, because uh, there is a, a few Robin Miles out there. Um, <laughs> And uh, yeah, I, I, the, you know, the one thing that I do is I find, I, I try and make myself really easy to find, you know, sure. my phone number is on the website. It's on my LinkedIn profile. My sure. email address is there, robin at inspiremeconsulting.com.au. Just reach out, you know, like I want to be easily findable when yeah. people, when people need. No, t- look, I totally respect the journey you've gone on with the book. I've written my book myself. I know how much effort goes into it, editing and, hours and hours of work and uh no mate it's a big effort and big achievement so well done with that too and getting it out yeah and i love it in the way that in actual fact the uh, the introduction i wrote two years ago um when i was uh with my dad which was the last time i saw him um before he passed away in hospital and um thinking about what's really important some of the advice in the in the um uh in the introduction was the last three bits of advice that he gave me is in the book. So it's got a real personal kind of um, aspect to it as well. Brilliant. No, it's lovely. It's a nice story to, to people to understand and take note of. That's great, mate. Well, look, I'll just say thank you very much for coming on today. Um, from Carl and I, really big appreciation. I've learned so much today from talking with you and getting your you know, feedback and look, we'll definitely have you on in the future to talk, to expand the subject. So I thought I'd, I'd just, we could go on for hours. <laughs> um, but uh, I've got so many more questions to ask you, but I, yeah, but I think we uh, obviously people need to um, get back to their day jobs and so forth. But yeah, look, thank you very much. Um, and definitely looking forward to coming up to Byron and seeing you for sure. Uh, yeah, we'll talk, definitely. Talk, 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 thank you very much for the opportunity. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Pleasure. Thanks, mate. Cheers.